everyone. I'm Karine Lebourne. I'm Senior Policy Advisor and leading on the ETEX Award campaign for World Vision UK. Hello, everyone. My name is Dipesh Paul Thakur. I'm the Director for Local to Global Advocacy and Impact, working for World Vision International. Uh, I would like to use this quote from Fernanda, 16 years old female, a girl from Angola, where she says that from the time quarantine started, there are and there has been domestic conflicts between parents and also involving children where children are physically abused and their own parents, by their own parents or guardians, physical abuse cases towards children have really risen in our neighborhood. Previously, most of the cases were about neglect, but it is still increasing. The expression from Fernanda is an interesting one. Despite the very fact there are lockdown restriction and movement, we may assume that violence does not happen, but the testimonies from various children across the world, such as Fernanda, really provides evidence about the occurrence of violence and the support they would need in terms of addressing the issues of violence. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm also like inspiring, like uh, with uh, Jomari, he's like 17 years old, he's from Philippines, and what he's telling us is that I'm volunteering in my community to battle the coronavirus pandemic and raise awareness about the risk the virus brings to the population. We want to ensure that the people are following the instruction and are using masks and gloves when needed. I feel this as an opportunity to help others. And so, you know, like uh, Jomari explained us like very clearly that it's very important to him to get involved in raising awareness about COVID-19, about informing people about the risk associated with the disease. But most important as well, it's about like children and young people having a role to play during the COVID-19. Yeah, so Karen, uh, why do you think it is important building resilience of children and young people during a crisis or a, a you know, situation such as this of COVID-19? Yeah, I think like building resilience in children and young people helps them to overcome like obstacles more easily and reduce like the chance of suffering from anxiety. And as you know, like, you know, like children and young people are curious, spontaneous, they want to be involved, they want to be part of the solution. And I think for that, like we really need like to provide, provide them like a space to express themselves. And you know, like you were mentioning about like Fernanda, about like the code. And I know like this code is coming from a consultation like uh, World Vision uh, was conducting. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, sure, Karen, would love to do that. Listening to children is a heart uh, to World Vision. Uh, with its approach in programming and advocacy, we are committed to amplify the voices of children. And to move this forward, World Vision conducted a consultation with more than 800 children in around six regions with more than 40 countries. And the uh, consultation was starting in the month of uh, May. Uh, and basically the consultation followed interviewing uh, children online, in person, but when we did it in person, really trying to strictly adhere to the social distancing guidelines. And we followed the minimum standard for consulting children and young people developed by the interagency working group. Basically, we wanted to learn the expressions of children around three major themes of three major questions. One, the impact of COVID-19 on children and young people the resilient responses to these impact personally in their families and communities. And third, the support that children and young people need to be safe, healthy, and help fight further to the spread of this particular virus. And Karen, I tell you, I was amazed with the wealth of knowledge, the wealth of sharing from the children themselves, which is really humbling and would love to share this more with all of you. So uh, Karen, moving forward, I also wanted to ask, this consultation is important for us, but why do you think, what are your thoughts in terms of importance of listening to children? Why do you think we should listen to children? 
I think it's a great question, like Deepesh. And, and you know, like most of the time, like children and young people are seen as victims. But I'm seeing them as social actors. I'm not denying their suffering, but I'm capitalizing on their voice and contribution in order to address like their struggling. And you know, like I think with like COVID-19, like uh, it's really a good opportunity, like uh, to uh, to have like the perspective from children and young people. And I think it's what we want to do, like with this presentation, like we will do, like in October. We want to challenge the mentality among like the child protection, like professional. That like maybe like the thing like in the first phase of the response, like children and young people cannot be consulted. But what we want to demonstrate, like with like the uh, consultation from World Vision, you, like uh, international, it's possible. And so, so yeah, we are like delighting like to share like more about like this consultation with everyone. As Karen said, we welcome you for the panel session on building resilience of children during COVID-19. We'd love to share about the experience of children around the world. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you.